So let's talk about cholesterol. Let's talk about what it is, and then I'll tell you why I am not afraid of it. I want to try and keep these podcasts shorter. It's hard when you're loquacious like I am. So let's start with this. If I search cholesterol, I see articles like this. I see a bad LDL right here. If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. I see plaque in the arteries. I see high cholesterol levels. I see all of this badness, hardy, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, ruptured plaques. Again, this is what we have been told over and over and over without any context. But this is cholesterol. This is a steroid molecule and the backbone of our steroid hormones, which include testosterone and many other valuable things. So you can see here that cholesterol goes into cell membranes. Cholesterol is essential in the human body. This is cholesterol next to phospholipids in a phospholipid bilayer membrane. Cholesterol in the cell membrane is critical for proper membrane fluidity. You can imagine that if your membrane is too stiff, your cell membranes break. If your membrane is too fluid, your cell membranes fall apart. Cholesterol is essential for cell membrane fluidity, which is kept at a very, very tight level. It's a very, very tightly controlled process. Now, as an aside, very quickly, there is a theory of why cholesterol may go up on a diet that is high in saturated fat called the homeoviscous model. Many of you may ask, why does my cholesterol go up? Now, oftentimes cholesterol refers to LDL, which I'll get to in a moment, which is a low density lipoprotein, which contains cholesterol, but also contains triglycerides. I want you guys to understand first and foremost, that cholesterol is a steroid backbone molecule that is essential for human life. That is the precursor to estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, androgens, mineralocorticoids, all kinds of important steroid hormones in your body that you will die instantly without. You cannot live without cholesterol. Your body makes cholesterol, something that is interrupted by statins, and your body also makes important things in that same pathway, which I will show you in a moment. Now, that cholesterol is packaged into LDL particles, lipoprotein particles, like a balloon in the liver, and I will show you that lipoprotein metabolism in a moment. This is the homeoviscous model I was mentioning, uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition from January of 2021. The homeoviscous adaptation to dietary lipids model explains controversies over saturated fat, cholesterol, and cardiovascular disease risk. If you read this abstract, what you will find, this is a long abstract, is that when we eat more saturated fat, they say corresponding with the model, we suggest alternate contributing factors to the association between elevated LDL cholesterol concentrations and ASCVD, which is atherosclerotic coronary vascular disease involving dietary factors beyond saturated fatty acids, such as an increased endotoxin load from the diet, which is coming from the gut, that is a cell membrane component of gram-negative bacteria, gut microbiome interactions, and subsequent chronic low-grade inflammation that interferes with finely tuned signaling pathways. But what they're saying with regard to the membranes here, an SFA, a saturated fat-induced raise in LDL cholesterol in healthy individuals could represent a normal rather than a pathological response. And that is because as the membrane becomes more enriched with saturated fat, you must put more cholesterol into the membrane to maintain its fluidity. So they'll say here, in this paper, we propose, in this paper, we propose a novel model, the homeoviscous adaptation to dietary lipids, HADL model, which explains changes in lipoprotein cholesterol as adaptive homeostatic adjustments that serve to maintain cell membrane fluidity and helps helps optimal cell function. Due to the highly variable intake of fatty acids in humans and other omnivore species, we propose that circulating lipoproteins serve as a buffer to enable the rapid redistribution of cholesterol molecules between specific cells and tissues that is necessary with changes in dietary fat supply. Okay, so what they're saying, you eat more saturated fat, your membranes become more full of saturated fat. Saturated fat is more stiff than mono or polyunsaturated fat. This means your membranes must become enriched in something that is more fluid. And that may be a reason that your body puts more cholesterol into your cell membranes. These are phospholipids. These phospholipids have tails. If you eat more polyunsaturated fatty acids like linoleic acid, we know these get stuck in your membranes. These are more fluid. Then your body can lower cholesterol. This is the reason that I believe for decades we have been so confused by this association. People believe that cholesterol, more specifically LDL lipoprotein, which contains a cholesterol molecule, is bad for humans. So anything that lowers that must be good for us. Therefore, polyunsaturated fatty acids, which lower cholesterol, quote unquote, or more specifically LDL lipoprotein, must be good for humans. 
wrong. We know that when you decrease saturated fats and you increase polyunsaturated fats, you get more oxidized LDL and you get more lipoprotein, little a, things that are very strongly associated with cardiovascular disease in contrast to low density lipoprotein, something that is not strongly associated with cardiovascular disease. If you actually look at the research very well, LDL is a piss poor predictor of cardiovascular disease risk. I'll say it again. LDL, low density of protein, is a very crappy, shitty predictor of cardiovascular disease risk. And as I'll show you later in this podcast, when you stratify LDL versus heart disease risk by a third variable that is correlated with insulin resistance and or insulin sensitivity, you see a very different relationship emerge, whereas there's essentially no correlation between LDL level and cardiovascular disease. Mainstream medicine has it very wrong. But what we know, and this may be related to the homeobiscus model, is that when you eat more saturated fat, butter, eggs, tallow, meat, all the things that make us vital, real, strong humans, your LDL will likely go up. In the majority of the population, LDL rises. This causes consternation in so many physicians. I just had someone send me blood work today. They said, my labs look great, except my doctor's worried about my LDL. So don't worry about it. You are insulin sensitive, something I'll talk about in a moment, and your triglycerides are low, your HDL is high. Why do we believe LDL is a problem in the setting of insulin sensitivity? That is the main debate I have with mainstream medicine. Getting a little bit ahead of myself, let's back up. This is the cell membrane. This is an LDL particle. So this is a lipid monolayer. Again, these are phospholipids with tails that can be monounsaturated or saturated fats. You have uh, non-esterified cholesterol in the membrane, and you have cholesterol ester, which is cholesterol attached to a chain, a fatty acid chain via an ester bond inside the LDL particle. And you have triglycerides like phospholipids, but not really. They have three tails as opposed to two tails, but those triglyceride tails can also be composed of mono, poly, or saturated fatty acids. You'll also notice that in the membrane of an LDL molecule, which is something like a cell, but not quite like a cell because it's a lipid monolayer, you see apolipoproteins, which is just a fancy word for a protein in the cell membrane. You can get apolipoprotein C, E, and B100. Uh, there's also B48. These identify this as an apolipoprotein B containing particle. This is VLDL, so it is apolipoprotein B100. You can also get other uh, apolipoprotein B containing particles like chylomicrons and like LDL. I'll show you lipoprotein metabolism in one moment. This is another representation here. You can see LDL just has B100, IDL, apolipoprotein E, and B100, VLDL, B100, apolipoprotein E, and apolipoprotein C2. So chylomicrons, B48, apolipoprotein C2, A1, apolipoprotein E, and HDL is over here. We'll get into that eventually, apolipoprotein A1, E, and C2. The lipoproteins, the apolipoproteins in a lipoprotein particle identify the particle. These are like little buses running around. They go different routes. And you can identify the route based on the lipoproteins that are present in the particle. I know this got technical quickly. I wanted to keep it very basic. Now, <laughs> classification of lipoproteins. If you repeat a lie enough times, becomes the truth, the bad, the non-HDL. Except how can they be bad if you die without them? Chylomicron, chylomicron remnants, very big. You can see the sizes here, 100 nanometers, VLDL, 70 nanometers, HIDL, 40 nanometers, LDL, 20 nanometers. And actually it's important to note that HDL is even smaller, 10 nanometers. HDL is plenty small enough to get into the endothelium but it doesn't cause atherosclerosis. We'll talk about why later, but HDL is even smaller than LDL. So apolipoprotein B is critical for atherosclerosis. It appears that this apolipoprotein B is the critical nature. It is apolipoprotein B is critical for, these, uh, for this particle, this LDL particle to get pulled into the cell membrane. And that is the beginning of an atheroma, a cardiovascular plaque like one of these. But the question remains, is LDL directly injurious to the cell membrane or is it just an innocent bystander? In, in, in essence, what I'm asking here, is LDL the arsonist or is it just a innocent bystander or even a fireman that comes to the rescue of a damaged cell membrane? This is a good representation of lipoprotein metabolism. So we've gone from basics of cholesterol and LDL to lipoprotein metabolism quite quickly 
but bear with me. You eat food, it contains fat. That fat is packaged into triglycerides in your gut, which are packaged into chylomicron particles. If you remember from this diagram, here's a chylomicron. And we know which apolipoproteins identify chylomicrons. That chylomicron is in the bloodstream, lipoprotein lipase acts on it. You get transfer of cholesterol ester and triglycerides between a chylomicron remnant and an HDL particle via an enzyme called CETP, cholesterol ester, cholesterol ester transferase protein, transfer protein. These chylomicron remnants are taken up at the liver. Now, you also see free fatty acids going into the liver. Insulin is connected with free fatty acids. I will discuss that shortly in regard to Dunnigan familial hyperlipidystrophy. So remember that free fatty acids are connected with insulin, specifically the actions of insulin stem. They stop the flow of free fatty acids into the bloodstream. Free fatty acids can go into the liver, and then the liver makes the next buses. Think of the liver as the bus station. These are buses, chylomicrons, chylomicron remnants are buses coming into a city. Let's call it Chicago for lack of a better city, whatever you city you want. And there's a bus station in Chicago. There are passengers on the buses, cholesterol ester and triglycerides. They get on and off the buses. Before you even get to the bus station in Chicago, some of the passengers get off the bus and go to HDL from the chylomicron remnant, and some passengers get on. But a lot of the passengers, most of the passengers get on to the big bus as you eat food, and it goes to the bus station in the liver. Then the liver sends out a bus called VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. Again, we know which chylomicrons identify very low density lipoprotein. And then the VLDL moves through your bloodstream where the same things happen. CETP, cholesterol ester transfer protein, helps triglycerides and cholesterol esters move from HDL uh, to VLDL and triglycerides move um, from VLDL to HDL. And then it gets smaller and smaller because it drops things off at your cells. It drops off cholesterol for some membranes, so your cell membranes can remain as viscous and as fluid as they want to be, and it becomes smaller and smaller. You have this IDL, intermittent, intermediate density of a protein, and then LDL, the one everyone thinks of and the one that we colloquially think of as cholesterol, right here, LDL. And then you have small dense LDL, and both of those, small dense LDL and LDL, return to the liver. You see the apolipoproteins here as well, E, C, A1, B100, B48. We talked about that earlier. This is a bus system, but just like buses are critical for a city, for passengers to move around a city, lipoproteins are critical for your body. You will die without these, and you will die without the cholesterol needed to make cell membranes and needed to make these cholesterol esters that go into the LDL particle and the cholesterol that is unesterified that is necessary to make these membranes and the membranes of your body, which must be fluid.